You will be uh, live and involved in a speaking engagement this evening at the Shepherdstown Library. I am, and I hope everybody can come out and see it. It's a presentation I call Dare to Dream. It's a, uh, a keynote that, that I've done for a lot of different groups. And essentially, it talks about you know, anybody who wants to pursue a a a career of the people would think of dreamers, you know, whether mm-hmm. you want to be a singer, an actor, a writer in my case, or anything else, there is a thousand reasons not to do it. And there's sort of this culture of negativity to talk people out of it. So what the presentation is really about in dare to dream is, uh, how, how to overcome the thousands of reasons not to try, but at the same time, not putting all of, all of the eggs in that one basket, you know, to have a backstop and, and to just kind of keep going. It, it's, it's, it's been very well received in the past. And the good news is I get to give it at one of the most gorgeous library facilities I've ever seen at Shepherdstown Public Library. Brand spanking new. It's bright and it's clean. It's comfortable. Beautiful. In fact, <clears throat> the, um, the book that uh, the next grave book that comes out in in August, I just found out that was in July. No, it's in August. Uh, I wrote about forty percent of that book there in the library because we got a new puppy, Kimber, and mm-hmm. she wouldn't leave me alone. So, and you know, you can't type when the dog is pulling at your arm all the time. So it was a place to escape, and I I spent. I was I was there for weeks. I mean, every day for weeks. And the chairs are comfortable. And it was, it was and I'm really selling it, it, man. Yeah, I know. It was it was it was great. So you've been John Gilstrap your whole life, but how long have you been New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap? What age did that happen? Uh, age 38, 1996. So never too late to succeed. That's right. Right at any age. Right. The only the it's um, you, know, you only fail when you quit. Do you have other pithy sayings like that you'll be doing? No, well, I will tonight. I don't want to give them all away. Just, you know, it's, well, you played it's, a good one, right? There, there you go. It's um, no. The, the the big takeaway, actually, out of out of the presentation is that that failure can't be inflicted by anybody. It has to be declared by the individual. You got to accept it, right? And um, as long as you keep getting, answering the bell, you're good. And speaking of the Shepherdstown Library, we have with us two representatives of the library: Holly Taylor or Hallie. I'm sorry, she is the director of the. Shepherdstown Library. Hallie, good morning to you. Good morning. And Leanne Warner. She's the Director of Development. Leanne, hello. Hi. So, ladies, Mr. Gilstrap is going to be speaking at your library, and please tell me how this invitation was extended to this fine young man seated here to my right. Well, we have a beautiful new facility, and we have lots of room to conduct all kinds of activities, Mm -hmm. and uh, we want to take advantage of that. And so we saw this gentleman come in, uh, kind of every day for a number of weeks. And who is that guy? Who is with with that puppy guy? scratches on his arm. <laughs> right. And we got curious. And actually, I think uh, you offered to give us uh, copies of all of your books. I did. Which we gratefully accepted. Cool. They're happily going out. And I, I have to tell you that many years ago, I don't even remember the year, you probably do, that Nathan's Run came out. 96. 96. And it was a huge buzz in all the libraries. And that, and I read that, and it was really very, a really wonderful book. And uh, So were you kind of blown away that the author of Nathan's yes. Run was sitting in your library writing yes, his were. next bestseller? Es- escaping we his puppy. Yes. Escaping yeah. his puppy. <laughs> Usually people are, are concerned. We always thought authors would be brighter than you are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow more impressive. It, no. It's no. such a disappointment. <laughs> yes, you can imagine when I go places, I'm not even an author. Yeah. Hey, uh, so w- will you be doing a continuing speaker series throughout the course of the library's year well, here? Well, I'll tell you, we've only been in the space since July 23rd. And uh, we are still finding our way because we moved from a you know, a tiny 2,000 square foot building uh, in the middle of the street. In that was the in Ger- on German Shepherd's- Street, right? Mm-hmm. Shepherdstown. And the second floor was the children's floor, but it mm-hmm. was completely, completely inaccessible to children who had mobility issues. So now uh, we're just thrilled to have all this space there. And uh, we're finding our way. Mm-hmm. We're, tr- we're trying all kinds of things. We're, we're having people come in to speak, and we're very excited about tonight. Uh, we're having a game nights. We're having uh, people come in and do their craft, just sitting together, talking as a community. Uh, we, we're we're uh, lending the space out for nonprofit meetings, board meetings. Um, we had a children's birthday party <laughs> one time. Well, the, the, the evolving nature of libraries, I ask this because as a kid, you use, a, you know, when I was a kid at least anyway, you used a library a lot in, in school. I mean, we had a library in the school and you, you had to go to the library to get a book once a week. 
uh, the public library in the community. You went there as you, as you got older because you needed to write your term papers. You needed to go someplace to research things. The library at the college, everybody was there, especially at term paper time. Uh, but then this thing came along about 14, 15 years ago. And you could get everything that you wanted just by doing one of these on your, on your phone. And libraries suddenly weren't the place you had to go to as much anymore. Did libraries would, does, need to evolve to keep up with that? Libraries have evolved. And the nature of the library is not to provide books for people. Mm -hmm. It's to provide access, open, free access to information mm -hmm. in any form and uh, in any venue. So uh, what we say is... There's a quote, I did not make this up, but you know, Google can bring you a million answers, librarians can bring you the right one. So what now librarians are- It's like a are, power move against yeah. Google, smart. Oh yeah, my son <laughs> works for them. He works anyway, for yeah. But, <laughs> but the like point so. is that uh, a librarian mm -hmm. is a navigator for you. And librarians are some of the most trusted people in, 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 in the community. Certainly. And, uh, and we, we cherish that role. And we work at, at keeping it, you know, important. So, do you have a degree in the library sciences? I do. Yes. Yeah. Is that required to run a library? Um, it it is in some places in West Virginia. It's required, except that uh, you cannot get a master's degree in West Virginia in library science. So they can't really require it, but mm -hmm. they, it's preferred. So um, basically, li libraries have been under attack. School libraries. Uh, collections have been under attack by, by the community at large. And I think it's very important to let people know that libraries, public libraries, are a cornerstone of our democracy. They're the place where you can go to get any information that you need or want mm -hmm. for free. They're a place where you can go to find your community. They're a place where you can go to read about yourself, your development, about anybody else in the world, other people's experiences. It, it nourishes empathy. When you say libraries are under attack by the community, what does that mean? People have ideas about what other people should and should not be able to read. And they try to push that onto um, people, you know, other people. If somebody, Certain people, if they object to a particular topic, and LGBTQ information and education is a is a forefront is at the forefront of that. If they don't feel comfortable with it, they want the library to take all those books off the shelf, mm -hmm. and that's just you can't do that. Is that an, I've heard of, I've heard of this backlash in the classroom, and generally mm -hmm. speaking, it, it uh, dealt with the younger ages. But are you telling me that there is a movement in all states or just West Virginia to yeah. remove books from library shelves? There, I, th I would say it's more at the school level because it's the parents that are coming in. At, at the public library level, they are still, there's a, there was a locally funded public library that had to shut down because the residents did not want particular books on the shelves. In this community and, here? No, no, no. I'm sorry. This I can't remember the state, but oh, okay. I remember Elsewhere. reading about no. So w w what I want to do is just, you know, sort of preempt any kind of action like that in our, in our area by letting people know that these institutions are critical. Well, let's expand on that a little bit. And, and I, actually, Nathan's Run became one of the 100 most banned books in America when it came out because oh. it had bad words in it. Really? And yes, um, in fact, <laughs> there's a long story behind that. Say a few of them if you don't mind. And no, you don't want me to. <laughs> you told me that when I, when I, when I started yeah. doing this. Say there, anything once. All of, George Carlin had all of them in, mm -hmm. in his routine. Yeah, right. um, but we're talking about a public library, we're talking about public schools. So there are choices that have to be made, right? Be, we, the libraries are spending the public money to, to buy is nobody's saying that from what I've heard nobody's saying that John Q citizen can't have whatever book he wants in his private library but when it comes down to making choices how do you not you perhaps or whoever makes those decisions it is a zero-sum game to buy one book means you're choosing not to buy a different book that's so correct. so in there lies the argument where's the where's the solution well the solution is to have a very good and solid collections policy which states that we select books that are uh, popular 
and that have been reviewed well. Uh, we do respond to individual requests. If people come to me and say, I really would like to read this book and it's not anywhere in your system because we have a great interlibrary loan system, I have to say that, in West Virginia. Um, I'll consider it. I'll read the reviews and I will choose to buy it or not to buy it. Because like you say, if I buy that, I may not be able to buy another book. So it, 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 there's a fine line when you're walking the censorship line. You know, am I censoring or am I making a smart decision about another book? So, and we do have a limited budget, but the basic concept is that you are responding to your community. Now, if 90% of my community came in and said they don't want to have anything about LGBTQ, I probably would say, well, you know, there's probably 10% that do, and I cannot take it away from them either. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's you're right. It's a, it's a bit of a give and take and a understanding your community. So when the next Harry Potter is coming out, you know that mm -hmm. there's going to be a gojillion people that want to read this thing. Uh, but the demand is only going to last for so long, two, three years. Right. And then, so do you bring in the 300 copies, making the numbers up here, mm -hmm. bring in the 300 copies of, of Harry Potter and they, they, they're lent out everywhere but then when you start having the extra books, what happens then? Okay, well, in, with our budget, we buy one copy. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't afford it. That is it. one dog-eared copy by the time it's all it's done. It's definitely. Sometimes However, two. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. two. Sometimes okay. two. Sometimes two. Um, but we have a super interlibrary loan system where we have a courier that goes around nine libraries. So mm -hmm. if Martinsburg can afford to buy five copies and there's one sitting on the shelf, we can request that to be brought to Shepherdstown. Um, we can go beyond our nine libraries as well. So um, we also have Kindles that we lease out, and so we can download the book to our Kindles. Oh, and, yeah. How and does that work? Check those out as well. That works very well. Uh, we use it for book clubs when uh, they want, you know, cause so everybody has to have a copy of the book, and they don't want to all run out and buy it. And I only have one copy, and I say, well, I can, um, you know, purchase a copy and put it on six of my Kindles. And, and then at the end of, of the the lease time, le le it's just a, no. You buy it. You buy it. Purchase. No, no, no that's you. But as as a patron, does it just disappear from my Kindle nope. after the two weeks? No, nope, they're downloaded. It's not your Kindle. We have Kindles that we lend out. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. A lent Kindle. Yeah, yeah a lentil. A lentil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Very studio, in soup. <laughs> Liam Warner and Holly, uh, Hallie Taylor. I'm sorry from the Shepherdstown Public Library. So. In regards to funding, and, and we used to do a segment with Kelly Tanksley from the Martinsburg Berkeley mm -hmm. County Public Library when she was in charge of development uh, there, and we would do rather regular appearances with her, and funding was always an issue. And at the it time, West Virginia's budgets were not healthy, so the state was borrowing from the rainy day fund, and one of the ways you start to cut back on spending seems to be with libraries, it seems, mm -hmm. at least at that time. Do you get the majority of your funding from the state legislature, from the town of Shepherdstown, from community support, how? Okay, so this is a um, it's a pretty straightforward picture. The state gives us a per capita amount at this point, based on our population of the of the county. Jefferson County. Jefferson County. Uh, it's five dollars and twenty six cents per capita at this point. Per year. It was raised, yeah, per year. So what happens is we get for this uh, fiscal year we get a hundred about one hundred and ten thousand dollars for our particular. We get a third of that because there are three public libraries in Jefferson County. You probably know this, but the Charlestown Library is not considered a public library. They're a private library, but they're open to the public. I did not know that. I didn't know that either. They're not, no. they're not supported by the state. Okay. They're not part of the public library system. Um, so the state takes the number of people in the county times 5.26 and divides it by the number of public we libraries. Divide it, we divide it, yeah. And, and in the past, we've divided it... Uh, like um, uh, 60, 20, 20, because uh, like two of the library, or one of the libraries was bigger, like Shepherdstown had more people, and Bolivar was a tiny little sure. snap together hut, and South Jefferson was a trailer. And as South Jefferson said, well, that's not fair because we really want to start building and be a big library. So we went to, you know, 33 and a third percent across mm -hmm. the board. So we each get about 110,000 a year at this point and we have to match that 100 percent with local funding and 50 percent of that local funding has to be tax-based 
In other words, it has to come from the county commission, the board of education, and the municipalities. Mm -hmm. So each library, each of the three libraries has a unique situation. Mm -hmm. We, our funding authority, our governing authority is the uh, Corporation of Shepherdstown. They're the ones that signed us into a, into ordinance. They have an ordinance establishing us, which was required. Um, then, so they're, they're our governing authority. In South Jefferson, they don't have a municipality, and the Board of Education did not uh, authorize any of the libraries, so they are authorized by the county. So their, author, authoriza their authorizing authority is the um, county. Okay. Bolivar is Bolivar Harpers Ferry. So they have uh, Bolivar and Harpers Ferry and the county commission that all kind of funded them. Okay. And what happens is that funding authority uh, uh, is a, gets the right to appoint the five board members. That's the basic thing. And when was the last time the state increased the funding formula it was from 5.26? to six? Oh my gosh. It was just recently within the it last was, two years. Yeah, before it was that, fairly so it has gone up. It, it had before been, that, it was like 10 or 12 it years. It had been a while. Yeah. Almost a decade before they had raised it. So, and then I, I presume the other chunk you're leaving out has to be what you raise on your own. Right, right. And how but, do you do that? Well, I'll tell you the um, the uh, county commission has been re pretty good in like giving us close to what we need. We get ninety two thousand five hundred from them, so we're almost there. Mm -hmm. uh, we get also get um, thirty thousand dollars from the board of education each library, and then Shepherdstown gives us. Uh, eighteen hundred dollars a month as our funding authority so we are over the match just with tax base now if another library can't make the full hundred percent they have to make up the rest by fundraising and you know asking getting grants and things like that do you have a grant writer or do you write grants yourself that's and where Leanne Leanne comes is in? a premier Hello. grant writer <laughs> So how, how are you doing on grants? How much money are you able to bring in with grants? Well, during the building phase, we brought in quite a bit of money through grants. Um, right now, we're, we're, we're the next, our next focus is the solar roof, and so we are currently in the process of writing a grant to try to get solar panels up on our roof to try to alleviate some of the expense associated with the Utility electrical bills, costs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most of the money, though, comes from donors. We, we are very good about fundraising. We have a lot of fundraisers per year and we also write letters and ask for money and our donors in this community are very very generous they have been during the whole building phase mm -hmm. of the project and they continue to be so now that the building is built and and there are bills to be paid to keep the building up and running so right now we're doing all right we're doing pretty well and we'll keep we'll try to keep going we have two major groups that actually help us very much with our fundraising efforts those would be our friends group Mm -hmm. Friends of the Shepherdstown Library, known as Fossil. And they, they pay an annual every chunk year. to be a friend? No, they raise money for us. They raise and every money year for they okay. raise between eighteen and $20,000 a year with their fundraisers and their membership dues and whatnot. And we also have the Nourishing Literacy Giving Circle that is collectively over 80 members strong, and they raise for us over $20,000 per year. And that is Nourishing Literacy One Meal at a Time. Each person gives to the library the equivalent of what they would pay for one meal per month. So in some cases, it's as low as $10 a month and as high as $100 a month. So collectively, that, that group of people, those 80 people, mm -hmm. and we're looking to expand that all the time, the, that group of people gives us, between those two groups, it's, it's over $40,000 just from them alone. And then the rest comes from the community in the way of generosity and from all the funds that you raise you staff the library with some paid i assume you have a good chunk of volunteers uh, as well right. we have six paid staff members and we have wonderful volunteers and they love to be there so and are your do you have health benefits is that state run no, or how does that work we do not no we health cannot benefits. afford it so no which medical. is a big drawback right. for hiring i'm sure that's an issue yeah yeah uh, do you hope to be able to raise enough to provide that and if you, if you did would it go through a private carrier it or would what? probably be through the state i think martinsburg has through the PEIA? state yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah all right so uh what's your budget for the year it's um over just over 300 000. over 300 000. Yeah. okay and in regards to people like mr gilstrap is this presented for free your mm -hmm. speaker series yes oh yes oh yeah 
this is this is something we also want to give back to the community provide experiences for the community that is not um, exclusive because people can't pay have you considered charging john to come in and talk yeah we did they, <laughs> we thought about he that. didn't charge us <laughs> <laughs> starts at 6 30 right uh, yes and so you'll be there early. there'll be wine and cheese and, yes and and such right we do have the scouts in there until 5 30 so it'll be a quick setup okay well that that, that works um say real quickly explain where you are and and how okay, gps how to doesn't get understand there. It. right gps is very confused um so the the best way to get there is to go to potomac farms drive which is the bypass between 45 and 480 um, if you're familiar with the area it's the corner of uh at where morgan's grove park is mm -hmm. there's a stoplight there and then on the other end there's a subway and um, Potomac Farms Nursery. Mm -hmm. Potomac Farms oh. Nursery is on that road. So it's sort of in the midway between the two. And it sits back off the road, a beautiful setting. Yeah. All and by it, itself. It, it's all by itself. We're, eventually it will be developed, but that may not be for quite a while. So it's mm -hmm. a beautiful setting with deer and foxes and all kinds of wonderful things running around. Much it's like our radio station. Beautiful. Here. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't hit the turtle Tucked on the away. way in, did you? No. 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 <laughs> it, it's even prettier than the radio station. Even if, it's hard to believe. I know. I, um, know. I would like to mention one other group, which is our garden stewards. I was just going to mention. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, it's uh, kind of spearheaded by a woman named Peggy Bowers, who moved to the community. And she has a, a very solid history as a, a horticulturalist for um, Mount Vernon and for Dumbarton Oaks. And she has gathered together the most amazing group of volunteers, and, and one of whom is a, a really good grant writer. I and mean, they've gotten almost $40,000 to plant trees, Excellent. to plant plants, to get mulch. And, uh, and they get free mulch delivered all the time, and they get free trees. I mean, yeah. they're really awesome. a great organization. They mm -hmm. are making our landscaping beautiful. Yeah. Hey, Gail is uh, watching on our Facebook uh, live feed, and she asks, do you take donations of books that people have purchased and have at home? Yes, we do. Our Friends of the Library has an annual book sale. This year we're going to be doing it a little bit differently because we're going to attempt to do it in our space, which is smaller than where we used to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but we are accepting books. Of course, we prefer not to have magazines. Uh, textbooks. Textbooks. No textbooks. No textbooks. You know, they're just good Good, nice quality things that people might want to purchase. So. Donna Joy, who's a Jefferson uh, County Board of Education member, says the Shepherdstown Kiwanis Club also contributes to the library. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. We have a number of groups. Well, it's great to see both of you. Uh, very nice to meet you, and I appreciate you having New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap in for his talk tonight. <laughs> and we we we're gonna look, we're gonna enjoy having him. Thank yes. you so much and for, uh, for please doing come this out. For us. I can't wait. Please come out. We got a nice big charcuterie tray. Six thirty. Yeah. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. Well, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.